This is Dr. Holt. This video is on solving vectors. In this video I want to talk about how to determine whether the vector has a positive or negative x and y components and then I'm going to add together four different vectors. <clears throat> Hi, in this picture here I have four vectors and let's talk about this because this seems for some reason to confuse students. Let's say we have vector A here, we'll make this vector B here, we'll make this C here, and we'll make this one D here. And the confusion I constantly see is, how do I determine whether it has a positive X, a negative X, a positive Y, or a negative Y? Alright, I'm going to pull each one of these out and talk, talk to you separately about that. Let's take this vector right here, A, and we'll pull it out here, and let's talk about what its components are going to be. To clarify this, remember when you add vectors that the hypotenuse or the resulting vector will always start from the tail tail. So here I will add the x going this direction here to create my triangle. Then I will add my y which will go from head to tail. And again you can do this if you'd like to. So you can look right now and you can say well I'm going to have a positive x component and I'm going to have a positive y component. Because remember, the resulting vector or the hypotenuse will always start with a tail tail down here and it will always end with a head head here. Now you don't have to add the x vector first, you could have add, added the y vector. And to demonstrate that, if I go this way with a positive y and then turn around and go this way with the x you notice I get exactly the same thing. I get a rectangle. So again, in this example, I would have a positive x component and a positive y component. Alright, let's look at the other vector over here. Let's look at vector b. If I pull b out and look at it, look at it and again, you can add the vectors just like we did before. We'll start here. We'll add our x. We start at tail tail. We go this direction with x and then we're going to come back up and I'm going to miss this just a little bit and I'll slide that over clarify that a little bit I'll slide this over here make that a little bit better and then we'll, yeah, that's close enough so now if you look at this I have a, ne I'm going to have a negative x because it's going to the left I will have a positive y and again remember you don't have to add x first I can come here I can add the y first I come up I come over and get in this in this way I have a positive y and I have a negative x. Alright, let's look at C. If I look at the C vector, pull it out again. We start here at tail tail. So I do my x. In this example, I'll have a negative x. I do my y. And again I'm gonna miss that just a little bit. I'll try to bring that in so I don't confuse anyone slide that in a little bit and then we'll shorten x just a little bit. Okay, in this example I will have a negative x and I will have a negative y. And again if you came from the other direction first and did my y I'd have a negative y and then a negative x. Alright, let's look at, oops, let's get this thing off of here real quick. Alright, so now let's look at uh, d, the d vector. If I pull d out and again I start at tail tail. I start here, I'll draw my X here. It's uh, not very good. Let's go back and do that one more time. Draw X. Oh, I'm having trouble getting that lined up there. Let's try one more time. It's kind of hard. I'm down here on the bottom of my tablet and we come over here and that's pretty cool. <sighs> Pretty close. Still one more time. Let's get down here and do this. All right. I'm going to come over here to my X. And now I'm going to come straight down here. That's pretty doggone close. And if you look here, I'm going to have a positive X and a negative Y. All right. So that's how you're going to do the components. And again, you could do the same thing here. I could have started with a Y icon, negative with a Y and then positive with the x. So this shows how to do vectors, how to determine whether the x and y components are going to be negative and positive. Alright, now let's get into adding vectors. 
In this example, I want to add A plus B plus C plus D. All right. And again, if you get confused about the positive or negatives, go back to the previous slide and watch that a couple times. All right, I'm going to go ahead and shorten this so I have some room to work. Um, I'm going to come here. I'm going to just bring this up a little bit. All right, so if I'm going to add vectors, what I'm going to do is I'm going to sum the x total x first. So this is my summation, and I'm, these are all forces, and I'm going to do all of them in terms of x. Now, one thing I'm going to clarify here, and, and again, it depends on how, how good your trigonometry skills are. When you have an angle here that's coming off the y-axis, if you prefer, you can take 90 minus this value right here and get the other side and 49. Again, that is completely your call and it's how comfortable you are with trigonometry. Um, I typically do this um, with students, but you don't, again, you don't have to do this and I'll clarify it when I get to the C. So now I have all my angles coming off the X. I have 62 here. I have 47 here. I have 80 here and I have the 49 here. All right, so if I'm going to sum up my x's in this case, we'll start with a. I'm going to do 60 times the cosine of 47. Okay, and again, that's going to be a positive value because the x component is going to go this direction. Now I jump to b. b is going to have a negative x. And again, if you're confused, go back to the previous slide. So I'm going to go minus 50 times the cosine of 62. Now I jump to C. I'm going to go minus, it's going to have a minus x value of minus 20 times the cosine of 49. Okay, again, I'll just clarify this one. I'll do this in a different color, blue. If you feel comfortable with your trigonometry and you don't want to do this, then what you could do here, the x component would be 20 or minus 20 times the sine of uh, 41 and I'll write that above and that would give you exactly the same value okay your call whether which one you want to do here it depends on what your comfort level is now we come over to D now you notice D is going this direction here what you can do with this and you have two options here you could if you look at this right now even though it's in this quadrant, it's going the opposite direction. So it's going to have a negative x and it's going to have a positive y. So we could say minus 30 times the cosine of 80. All right, now, just to clarify, if you prefer, you could say, well, I, I don't like the arrows going back toward the center. I want the tails all coming out of the center. You can just slide this vector right on through if you want to right here and then this angle right here being a vertical angle this angle here would be 80 degrees you can do it that way and that make make excuse me it may make more sense that that 30 times the cosine of 80 would give me the x component which would be negative in this direction again it is your call and what you prefer there I'm going to move it back down but again feel free to redraw it if you want to all right, so that's going to give me all my x values. Let's run that through the calculator real quick and see what we get. And again, make sure that your mode is set for degrees before you do this, because if you're set for radians, you're going to mess these problems all up. So I got 60 times the cosine of 47 minus 50 times the cosine of 62 minus 20 times the cosine of 49 minus 30 times the cosine of 80 and I get a very small value and I'll run it one more time I got the force of the resultant in the x direction when I sum all this up as negative 0.884 okay I'll run it one more time to make sure 60 times cosine 47 minus 50 times cosine 62 
minus 20 times cosine 49 minus 30 times cosine 80 and I got the same value so I'm pretty comfortable that we did that correctly so I'll go ahead and circle that in red oops not red, I'm sorry I meant red Hit red up here okay I'm going to extend this up a little bit and give myself a little bit more space now let's do the other one let's do the Y okay now I'm going to sum my forces in the Y if I sum my forces in the Y I will get I look at the 60 it's going to have a positive Y value so it's just going to be 60 times the sine of 47 I look at B it's going to have a positive Y value again if you're confused go back to the previous slide fifty times the sine of sixty two I look at the C value it's going to have a negative Y so I'll put minus twenty times the sine of forty nine or if you prefer just to talk about this you could write this as minus twenty times the cosine of forty one either one of those will give you exactly the same value now we jump down to this one this one now is going to have a positive y value so I put plus 30 times the sine of 80 again I'll put this in parentheses and we'll run that number there and see what we get <coughs> alright 60 times sine 47 that gives me 43.88 I'm going to add that to 50 times the sine 62. All right, now up to 88.028 after added those two together. Then we're going to minus 20 times the sine of 49. Now we're down to set, we're at 72.93, and then we'll go plus 30 times the sine of 80, and we get 102.48. So we know that F the resultant in the y direction is going to equal to 102.47 newtons okay we'll circle that in red and again I would always go back and check these and I'm going to do that myself just to clarify to develop good habits with you guys 60 times the sine of 47 plus 50 times the sine of 62 minus 20 times the sine 49 plus 30 times the sine of 80 gives me 102 point okay so we're good with that all right now let's go ahead and let's come down here just a little bit further and we're going to talk about how to get the actual resultant we have our two values here so we're going to go back and I'm going to draw myself a small little um, uh, coordinates or excuse me I'm going to draw the vectors the small vectors and kind of show you what's taking place here so we got a very small vector that's going to the left that's going to have a, uh, a, a value of 0.884 and then we have a huge vector going up here of 102.47 so my resultant vector again is going to be from tail tail all the way up here to head head Okay, we'll go ahead and change this resultant into a different color and we'll make that one into red and then we're going to go ahead and just label the values and again I recommend this so this value is going to be 102.47 this value right here is going to be 0.884 and you notice I didn't make it negative and the only reason I didn't make it negative because the negative is referring to the direction I know it's going to the left and now I want to find this one here so the, I'll call it the force resultant and we fall back to Pythagorean theorem we go back to 0.884 we square that plus 102.47 squared and we'll run that number however you 
this value is very, very small to this one, so we're probably going to get something very close to 102.47. And I got a value of 102.48. Okay, so that's the result. And that means I could take all those vectors and replace them with just this one vector right here. However, I need to know the direction. We're going to find this angle right here first. We'll call that theta. Again, this, this value here is the opposite of this angle. This is the adjacent side, so we know we're going to go back and use tangent. So we can say the tangent of theta is equal to 102.47 divided by 0.884. That's a point, sorry. So we do 102.47 divided by 0.884. We're going to do second tan second answer to get that. And I'll talk about that. That's 89.5. So we know theta is going to equal to 89.51. <clears throat> now to clarify how I did that, when you have this type of uh, trig function written like this, to find out theta, you're going to take the inverse tangent of this, or in your calculator, the second tan. That's going to give you the 89.51. Again, your calculator mode must be set for degrees, otherwise you're going to get the value in radians. Now, let's just talk about if it says what is the angle back to the um, positive x direction. Let's just show what that would be. We'll draw a line here. If I know this value here is 89.51 degrees and I want to find this value right here, this value, or call it theta 2, theta 2 is only going to equal to 180 minus 89.51. So when we do that, we're going to get a value of 90.49. So we could say this value here is 90.49 degrees. Okay, and really, that's all you have to do when it comes to be when it comes to adding vectors. You find your resultant, and then come back and find your angle. In the next video, I will do a demonstration of how to do it when you are multiplying a vector by either a positive or a negative coefficient. Best of luck.